Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. So I just, just recently, just a little while ago, learned of the passing of David Prowse, who played the iconic, legendary Darth Vader, one of the greatest villains in Hollywood history, one of the most iconic, maybe the most recognizable, you know, fictional villain in Hollywood history. Just an iconic character. And David Prowse, as you, as most of you probably know, he didn't voice Darth Vader, that was James Earl Jones, also amazing. But David Prowse wore the costume, wore the outfit, and he had a commanding presence on the film, in the films. He carried himself very well. He was an imposing figure. He did an absolutely fantastic job as Darth Vader. Now you couldn't see his face or hear his voice, so he had to do his acting through his body, you know, through his arm movements through the way he walked, the way he carried himself, and he did a brilliant job. Him in conjunction with James Earl Jones' voice, just awesome. And Darth Vader terrified me as a child. So I wanna show you guys, you know, just hearing about his death has gotten me to completely geek out over Star Wars once again, as I do frequently, and just get out some of my collection and show it to you guys. I'm very sad to hear of his passing, but at the same time, he lived to be 85 years old, nice long life, and he got to play one of the most iconic um, characters in Hollywood history. So at one, you know, at one point you can celebrate his life, and at another point, you know, you can be very sad. But it's regardless, it's just gotten me thinking about growing up such a big Star Wars fan and being a big Star Wars fan to this day, watching The Mandalorian now. And um, but the original Star Wars trilogy, that's where it's at for me. Huge fan. From the beginning, I saw the original Star Wars in 1977. When it came out, I was 10 years old. This was an amazing time to be a 10 year old. The same year the Atari 2600 came out and all my friends were getting it. And my brother took me to see, uh, we, we went to see Star Wars at the theaters. I'm sure my mom dropped us off. You know, my brother's like five years older than me. So he was, um, you know, 15 years old. He might've had a, he might have been 16 at this point and had a car. It seems like I remember him driving me there. Regardless, we saw it together. It was awesome. It was amazing. It blew me away. I loved R2-D2 and C-3PO. Darth Vader was super scary and awesome. Han Solo reminded me of, of uh, Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind, which I grew up watching with my mom. Anyway, huge Star Wars fan. Always have been. Always will be. And I want to show you guys a few items from my collection. Couldn't possibly show you at all. We'd be here all night, probably and into the next day, but I want to show you some of the items that are special to me, including, now we had a VCR in the 80s when a lot of people still kind of didn't have them. You know, it wasn't super pervasive just yet. They were still a little expensive, but we I did have the Star Wars trilogy. My parents got me this uh, for Christmas at some point during the 80s with all three, you know, films from the original trilogy. I love that box art. This is my original set. And I still have it, you know, even though I have the Blu-rays, you know, I got the DVDs and now the Blu-rays. Regardless, I like to hang on to this because I love the art, it looks good on my shelf, and it's a great memory of Christmas long time ago. Now, speaking of being a kid and being a Star Wars fan, I did not have the lunchbox. My parents typically bought me like those just brown bag it or I had a blue plastic one because the license stuff was more expensive. But my wife did have one, and I have inherited this, sort of. I think she still says it's hers, but it is in my game room, and so I love this. This is special to her, but sort of to me, because I've inherited it, sort not inherited it, but just sort of share it. Let's put that, put it that way. My wife is still alive, so I didn't inherit it. I share it. So it's cool to have, finally, after all these years. Now, one thing I did have when I was a kid, uh, Star Wars related, was an X-Wing fighter model kit. I put that together. Now my brother and I mostly did cars and trucks, but I was such a Star Wars fan. I wanted to do something from that film. And I don't, uh, I don't have the original TIE fighter. We probably blew it up with BB guns or something like as kids were to do back in the 70s and 80s. But I do have this repro and I do intend on putting this together at some point. I still have it in the box. I've opened it and looked at it and everything. I haven't sat down to put it together yet. I hope to at some point. But anyway, it's nice to have at least a repro. But I do have a couple of original Star Wars model kits I want to show you guys that I've picked up in recent years, including, appropriately enough, the authentic Darth Vader TIE Fighter. Pretty cool. Still factory sealed. That looks really nice on my shelf. I probably won't open 
these two models, this one or this one, because this is factory sealed as well. The Millennium Falcon, and these are from back in the day, still factory sealed. They look great on my shelf. And it'd almost be kind of a shame to open them. Yeah, you want to open them to, you know, because toys, basically, that's what you're used for. But they have done repros of these that you, if you want to put one together. I plan on keeping these originals in the box because they look really cool on my shelf. And another thing I did back in the day was I had the Star Wars novel. Now, I didn't actually read the novel, but I told my English teacher in seventh grade, I guess, it, I don't remember, some grade school, I uh, did a, a book report on Star Wars just based on maybe thumbing through the book a little bit, reading the synopsis, but watching the movie, and I sort of bluffed my way through that book report. Sorry, kids, I don't recommend this at home. And speaking of books, I did read Splinter of the Mind's Eye. This was the first Star Wars book that wasn't, you know, the first Star Wars novel that wasn't specifically based on a specific film. It was a separate story, but related to the universe, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I loved this novel growing up. This is an edition, like a reprint edition that came out in the 90s when I was working at Walden Books. But my original, I probably read it to pieces. I don't know where it's at. But anyway, some other books I have. I like these series, the Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. I just love the art on these. Those are nice to collect. These are in near mint condition I picked up over the years. Really nice and reading material. I've got a ton of Star Wars magazines. Couldn't possibly show you all those in a reasonable amount of time. But I want to show you some kind of cool ones and ones that mean something to me. Fangoria typically does horror movies, monster movies. But Star Wars was so big they couldn't ignore it. And there are monsters in Star Wars. So there's that nice uh, Star Wars Fangoria issue. And here's a really mainstream piece. People Magazine, Empire Strikes Back. Pretty cool. And let's see, you got Starburst Magazine, just, you know, one of many science fiction magazines back in the 70s and 80s. And this magazine meant a huge deal to me back in the day. When I was a kid, I grew up reading like Dynamite Magazine and Pizzazz, really nice Star Wars cover on that. Very iconic photo of C-3PO and R2-D2. That's awesome. And speaking of Dynamite, there's Chewbacca with David Cassidy. Some kid drew horns and a tail on David Cassidy, but this is not my original issue. My Dynamite magazines, I read to pieces when I was a kid, but I've been acquiring them since, and that's been a lot of fun. Photo play, not one you see every day. A great picture of David Prowse as Darth Vader. Just see his commanding presence there. Just the way he motioned his arms and his hands and the way he moved his body. He was such a great, so great in that role, even though you couldn't see his face or hear his voice. I've got these two official collector's edition Books, you know, just with behind the scenes stuff and, you know, uh, production art and, you know, behind the scenes photos and all that kind of stuff. Those are fun to have. Same with the Star Wars album. More behind the scenes stuff. Gotta love it. And, you know, way before the internet, this is how you got your behind the scenes information about your favorite films. Now, of course, being mostly a gaming channel, pop culture too, but a lot of video game stuff, I'm going to show you. A few of my video games. Now you can see some here in the background and I'm, I couldn't possibly show you all my games once again in a reasonable time. But I'm gonna show you some of my favorites and just some interesting ones, including my favorite Star Wars game, the Star Wars games, the Star Wars trilogy on the Super Nintendo, including Super Star Wars, Star Wars, Super Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Check out that box art, really nice and Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. This is a great trilogy of platform shooters, sort of, you know, action adventure games, but mostly shooting and platforming action. Excellent trilogy, difficult, but really cool. And back in the day at GameStop, I got Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron, the limited edition preview disc. This was only $5. The main reason I bought it is because you could get the original Star Wars arcade game, the full version of that in this, for just $5. Awesome. Still play that one to this day. And speaking of, before that, years before that, for the 5200 and the ColecoVision, they did Star Wars the arcade game. There's the ColecoVision version, a really good rendition of that. The Atari 5200 one is great too. Awesome stuff. Really good ports for, you know, early 80s. And for the 5200, there was also Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Really interesting shooter, very unusual. And I'm not a huge first person shooter fan. I do like Halo, Doom, and a few others, but I'm not into Call of Duty and all of that. But I do love Dark Forces. I played that for the PlayStation and the Mac back in the day. Excellent game. 
and I'll probably break this one out again soon to play it. I've got it off the shelf to show you guys, so I'll probably be playing that again soon. I'm sort of, when something like this, when a celebrity passes, it just sort of makes me, you know, one that's important. It makes me focus on, you know, what I love about the franchise that person was in or the movie that that person was in or whatever. And so now I'm definitely going to be uh, geeking out over Star Wars for the next few days uh, based on David Prowse, Prowse's uh, passing. Now, it's very sad that he passed away, but at the same time, it, it, it lets us focus, you know, just remember just some of the great stuff he did. And I remember him going back all the way to Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell back in 1973 where he played the creature. Anyway, back to uh, some of the video games here. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these two games, but they are kind of interesting. Star Wars and Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for the NES. Now they didn't do Return of the Jedi. I believe one was in production or they were gonna do one, but they never did. These are neat action adventure games, pretty cool. Don't play them a ton though. What I do like better is the more simple shooters for the Intellivision and Atari 2600, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. These are great shooters where you are firing away at the AT, -AT Walker, you know, just one after another. Really cool games. All right, guys. Well, RIP David Prowse. Really sad with his passing, but it's got me in Star Wars geek mode. So I guess it's a celebration of life or whatever you want to call it because he did live to be a good, you know, 85 years old, long life, successful career in Hollywood. Guys, let me know in the comments what did you think of David Prowse, of Darth Vader. Share your Star Wars memories with me. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. And thank you for liking this video. I will see you guys in another video.